Good morning to you. Trust you are well. Today I'm going to speak to you about um, the power of God. Maybe you've noticed, but this week my focus has been on getting to know who God is. Um, because without understanding His character, we will continually be intimidated by the lies of the enemy about who we are, our identity in Jesus, what we are called to do, our purpose. Everything lies around the foundation of knowing the character of God. And we find that in the scriptures. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. So we need to keep that in mind. And remember when he was dealing with the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious people, he does not deal with his people that way today. Um, so I want to read a scripture to you from Psalm 110, 110 verse 3. It says, your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. And I want to say I've realized that there are many times where we would love to see the power of God in action. We'd love to see God do what we need him to do. And we, we bind and we loose and we do all the Christian things. But without really hearing from him or knowing who he is, we're not that effective. And so... Um, I have a scripture here, but I first want to tell you a little story about something that happened to me. Um, I got woken up in the early hours of the morning a while ago, and it, there was nothing outward that woke me up that I know of, but I was lying in bed and this thought came to me. It was, it was a lie that came to me from the enemy, and with it came the fear. And as I was lying there in bed, it was it, it just came out of nowhere, but I could feel the fear in the room. It was as if there was a demon standing right there at the bottom of our bed. And I, I felt the fear. So what I did was the Christian thing to do. I began to bind the spirit of fear. I began to bind everything I knew to do. And um, I still felt the fear. And so what I had to do was... Um, consciously take a step back from doing what I, I've been taught to do, what I know to do. And in, in most cases, those are the right things to do. But in this case, I was dealing with a real presence of fear. And I'm not a fearful person. This is how I knew it was an attack of the enemy. And if you know me, I don't go looking around for attacks and demons and assignments. Um, I focus on the, the bigness of God, the presence of God in my life more than that. And so um, what I did was I consciously took a step back. I stopped doing the, the good Christian thing to do. And I said, God, what do I do now? And straight away, scripture dropped into my head. Psalm 32, you are my hiding place. Um, you, you keep me, you preserve me in a time of trouble. You, you surround me with songs of deliverance. And, and as I heard that, I knew it was the Spirit of God because I knew that scripture. It just didn't come out of nowhere. I had studied the scriptures. I know that scripture very well. But in, and as I heard that, this peace came and, and that, that fear had to go and I fell asleep again. But I realized in that is that in many cases, we, we turn to what we automatically, we turn to what we know to do. And then we're not really doing what God wants us to do in the situation until we stop and we say, God, what, what do you want me to do? And now the, the way it was easy for me to do that was, I know God is good. I know God doesn't send things my way to test me and see if I know how to operate in his power. Operating in the power of God only comes out of knowing who he is because it's his power, not our power. And so I want to read a scripture to you, um, Isaiah 61 uh, from verse 1 it says the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor he sent me to heal the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord or the year of favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn to console those who mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes the oil of joy for mourning the garments of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And the reason God gives us this anointing, because the anointing comes with the power to do what you're called to do. Um, the reason we have it is so that he may be glorified, not that we can look good. 
And so when, when we're waiting to see, we, we want to see his power in operation, um, the thing that I, I think for me, the first thing that I need to do, and maybe you can apply this in your own life, is draw back, take a step back, and be like Moses in the cleft of a rock, where God said, I'm going to hide you here, because you're not going to see my face. I'm going to hide you, and I'm going to pass by you, and I'll proclaim my name. In Exodus 33 and 34 is the story that I'm talking about. And um, be like Moses. Let God hide you in a time where you need his power the most. Let him hide you in his presence, in the cleft of rock. Let him be your Psalm 32. You are my hiding place. You preserve me in times of trouble. When the enemy is pressing on you and pressuring you, turn to him and say, I'm not going to bind and loose and do all the Christian things until the Spirit of God shows me what to do. And that's where you see the power. And so I'm going to leave that with you, but I just want to read this to you from my book, Fashion for the Days to Come. Our spiritual appetites change when we see how great our God is. The desire to be more like Jesus and walk in love will overshadow the need to be better than someone else. There will be no competition or jealousy when we understand that God gave us all something to do and he knew we would be great at doing it. That's his goodness and grace all over our lives. So remember that God's goodness and grace, he called you, he knows what you're capable of doing on your own, but he knows what he's capable of doing through you when you yield to him and you say, God, I'm only going to do what you want me to do. And then you'll see the power activated in those areas in your life. We need to receive his power for contending for the prophetic words that belong to the church in the last days. Those who know their God will be strong, the book of Daniel, because they are secure in who he is. He is good, merciful, abounding in kindness and truth, and he loves us relentlessly. We cannot be shaken concerning our understanding of the goodness of God. We cannot allow the enemy to sow seeds of doubt concerning his character and his love towards his people. And then Psalm 110 verse 3, I'll read it again. Your people shall be volunteers in the day of your power. Have a fantastic day. Have a powerful day getting to know the goodness of God in your life today.